I am at what I would consider to be the single most beautiful place so far this year, which is Atlin, British Columbia. You can only get here by going through the Yukon, but let me tell you, it is cold. It's been storming every day since I've been here, and I've been just waiting to get on the ocean, or sorry, on the lake, and uh, today it's not a whole lot better, but it's the best I've had so far. So we're gonna battle a little bit of waves today, but go out and do some exploring. Ever since I was a kid, all I wanted to be was an explorer. Sail the seven seas, find new worlds. But Uncle D, everything's already been found. What? Like everything? Well, yeah. Oh man. Well, so much for that. But if I can't be an explorer, I can still be an adventurer. So I bought a motorhome and I'm hitting the open road. My name is Dustin Porter and this is Destination Adventure. I think I'm gonna have to put that camera away because with the size of these waves, you guys are probably gonna get motion sick. the river that goes down into Tagish Lake. Just hit a bit of a shallow spot, but it's hard to tell because the water on Atlan Lake here is like crystal clear. I wish it was summer. I'd love to do some snorkeling around in here, but oh, cold today. I don't mind this rain. It should bring a little bit of heat with it and just the smell right now wow I wish I could I wish I could include smell in this video so fresh right now look at this water This is the Atlan side of the Taku Short Line, which was Canada's shortest railway. And I don't know what's left, but on the boat ride in, I could see this. It's uh, just the bottom section of what remains of an old rail car. Wheels and everything. Maybe this one was not so much for passengers, but for uh, equipment and material. Stakes would have gone in here, and they could have hauled stuff. This line was only, I don't know, just over two and a half miles. I don't know what's left, but we're gonna hike over to the other side, to the Tagish side, see what's there. Check this thing out. Literally just started the hike. I can see the outhouse built there. Super nice off-grid cabin. Really like it. Wow. Somebody has recently built this. It's in good shape. I don't know you guys, this is the trail I'm following. Obviously a somewhat traveled path, but I was told you could actually follow the old rail line. To me, this does not look like a rail line. Keep following this for a little bit, but not really sold that this is what I should be on. I think I figured out what's going on. Those trails I was following, I think those were just to access the cabins and build spots here. And coincidentally, they do parallel the old rail line. So I'm just bushwhacking now, see if I can go down and meet up with the 
beginning of the rail line, then we'll follow that over. Whoa! Could this be it? I think I found it. Frickin' finally. This looks more like it. <laughs> That's a train line. Here we go. Check it out. Found another cabin. Oh, there's a super cool little old Toyota over here. Seen some better years. Look at this place, just paradise. And they got a little sidekick out here. Beautiful spot. I'm not gonna go over and actually look through this one or at this one. Pretty well set up. So this could be somebody's actual like off-grid home for the summer. Something over here. Guessing a train car. Well, no, it doesn't look like it. Do you know what I think this is actually? I think this is just the roof to a train car. You can see the trusses there, one on the end. That's my guess. What it's doing over here, I don't know. What I was told about here that you can still see is the waiting room where the people used to wait for the train and then a couple old train cars and they're very easy to see they're right in front of me actually but there's some other stuff here as well um so somebody has obviously bought up this property and has put a little vacation cabin here so we're gonna look around a little bit but try not to poke around on anyone's property So this would have been the old waiting room where people would wait for the train. Look at this old floor. Just love that. She's seen some better days for sure. But it seems like the people that own the property now are doing their best to keep it, keep it upright. The lakes right now are very, very high. Look at this. These are two of the old train cars. And they should not be underwater. But here they are. Wow. Look at this beautiful spot these people have here. Unbelievable. And that's where the old steamer, would have, the paddle wheeler would have docked up there. I think this is my favorite sign that I've ever found. It says, please no hunting. Neighbors, children play all year round. Thank you. But the way they have it, it's like, please no hunting neighbors, children. <laughs> That's pretty funny. When you're on this property, no hunting the neighbors and the children. Not going to stay here super long. I have another hike that I'm going to try and fit in today. If it's even possible, I don't know yet. But my time in Atlin is going to be much shorter than I hoped because it is getting cold fast, really fast. And I have uh, just shy of 2,000 kilometers to get back to what we're going to call base camp, being Williams Lake. I have some work on the motorhome I do need to do there before I continue on. But uh, let's hit the trail. i 
relatively short boat ride to the next hike and I'm gonna try and hike up to what is called a rock glacier. Uh, the only thing is whether or not I can find the trail. I've asked around town and there is a trail to get there but it's very infrequently used so fingers crossed we can find it. on shore here and start looking around. Through the swirl, will you guide me? Through this pain, will you always hold my hand? When I my feet are getting just soaking wet right now. Look at this friggin' swamp. I'm a lasso, walking through the swirl like I have some idea. When I don't, I don't. And I take on the baggage cause I think that I can And I wait for the right time to go with my plan And come to you And when the morning comes I will feel that I am brave again Unfortunately, it looks like we might not be able to make it to the glacier Sucks, it's right there <laughs> Oh, I didn't know the trail was going to come out right at this lake. I'm tempted to push it around around the lake and keep hiking, but it's so late in the day, I don't know if it would be worth it. And honestly, I think it might be a little bit anticlimactic once I get over there. Because once I get there, it's just going to look like a pile of rocks. That's really all it's going to look like. But the fact that that's what's called a rock glacier is really neat because it's not all rock. Underneath that, there is like a regular glacier. It just has a layer of rock over top of it. And it moves the same way that a regular glacier does. So they actually come out here and measure how far it's moved every single year. I'd love to get over and see it, but I don't think I'll have the time today. While we're on this topic, I'd like to take a moment and teach you guys a little bit about glaciers because this is a subject I never thought I'd be that interested in. And then two years ago, I was fortunate enough to spend about three months on contract in Glacier Bay National Park filming glaciers and glaciers calving. And I remember I used to interview the lecturers and they would describe a glacier as a literal river of ice, which is such a perfect way to describe it because I don't think people understand just how actively a glacier is moving every day through the land. And of course, with that movement comes the calving off the front into the ocean. And let me tell you, there are few things more powerful to watch and to hear than a piece of ice the size of a house falling off the front of the glacier and landing into the ocean. I was fortunate enough to shoot a whole variety of different glaciers. So let's first talk about healthy glaciers. And by far my favorite, I think, is Hubbard Glacier. It is the largest tidewater glacier in North America, and it's one of the few advancing glaciers left in Alaska. Being an advancing glacier, that means that more material is introduced to the top of the glacier as what is falling off the front and the Hubbard actually advances four to six inches every single day. Another of my favorites is the Marjorie Glacier because it's a stable glacier. And the face, it's much smaller than the Hubbard Glacier, but it's cool because when you're out in the bay, you can see the Marjorie Glacier sneaking up through the mountains and it actually goes 21 miles back up into the mountains. And it's moving at a rate of about seven feet per day. Seven feet fall off the front, about seven feet are reinitiated back up into the mountains. The unfortunate thing with this day and age is most of the glaciers are not healthy. Most of them are actually receding at a pretty rapid rate. And a lot of people don't realize that when that weight is lifted off of the earth, it actually lifts up. It's called isostatic rebound. And in Glacier Bay in Alaska, the land is rising at about two inches per year. I could go on and on talking about my time filming the glaciers and I really enjoyed going through some of my old footage to find some shots for this, but it was really supposed to be just a little bonus at the end of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And most of all, 
Thanks for watching. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one.